You have three grammar or craft goals this week. By the end of the week, you should be able to identify the subject and verb of a sentence, use simple sentences in your writing, and fill your writing with colorful action verbs. So how are you going to get there? By the end of this lesson, I will have modeled for you each of these three skills. However, it's up to you to practice. Any time that you are writing this week, whether you are writing about your reading or whether you're responding to a writing prompt, you need to practice these three skills as you're working this week. So I should see you beginning to identify subjects and verbs in your own writing. I should also see you using simple sentences. And then I should see action verbs everywhere in your writing this week. So if you haven't done it so far, pause the video now, and I want for you to open up your composition notebook and write these three goals down in the grammar or craft section. Okay, let's get started with this first goal. Identify the subject and verb of a sentence. A subject is going to be a noun, a person, place, or thing that answers the question, who or what did it? A verb is going to answer the question, what did he, she, it, or they do? So let's start with a sentence from Loser by Jerry Spinelli. It's one of my faves. They race. So who or what did it? They. What is they doing? They are racing. They race. So my subject is they. Race is my verb. Matt winces. Who or what did it? Matt. What did Matt do? Matt winces. Okay, this is where it gets tricky. From the Fifth Wave by Rick Yancey, my favorite book that I read this summer. My head aches. So let's start with our verb at this point, what did he, she, or it do? So it's going to be an it. So what did it do? It aches or it ached. What is doing the aching? It's not my. Who or what did it? Head. Head aches. What's doing the aching? Head. Blood flew. Again, let's start with our verb. What is it doing? It's flying. It flew. So what flew? Blood. So my subject is blood, flu is my verb. So now it's your turn to practice. I want for you right now to practice identifying the subject and the verb for these three sentences. I'm going to ask you to pause the video, to write them down in your composition notebook, and to practice writing the subject, identifying the subject, and the verb. Okay, so I'm guessing you got this right because it is super simple. She giggled. What is giggling? She. What did she do? She giggled. So my subject is she. Giggle is my verb. Check that you got that right. Ryan hesitated. So who or what did it? Ryan. What did Ryan do? He hesitated. The jar shattered. Okay, let's start with our verb here. What is the what is um, it doing? It shattered. What shattered? The jar. Okay, so one of the things I want for you to notice right now is I want you to notice these verbs: giggled, hesitated, and shattered. These verbs are all action verbs. They express an action giggled, hesitated, shattered. I can picture these three verbs. What's the difference when I look at these three verbs? Rather than saying she giggled, what if I said she is joyful? So she is definitely my subject. What is she doing? Joy? No. My verb is is. He was unsure. Here, I'm going to copy this real fast. He was unsure. So he is my subject, right? Who or what did it? But what is he doing? Unsure? No, my verb is was. 
the jar is broken. So the jar is my subject. What is the jar doing? It's not breaking, it just is broken. So is is my verb. So what I want you to notice, these verbs are really different. So these verbs over here where I can picture them, they're called action verbs. Giggled, hesitated, shattered. These verbs over here, is, was, is, these are to be verbs. To be verbs you're going to learn about next week. And to be verbs are just like the being present. So she is, he was, the jar is. To be verbs are almost just like the verb for existing. So this week, our goal is to use verbs like this, giggled, hesitated, and shattered, that really paint a picture for the reader versus verbs like is, was, and is that don't really. So let's start to look at some of these short sentences. And these short sentences, are gonna, we're going to call them simple sentences. So a simple sentence has two things. A simple sentence has one subject plus one verb. One subject plus one verb. That is it. So let's look at a couple um, collections of simple sentences from famous um, texts or from famous literature. So this is one's from Stephen King's Cujo. Tad watched, blood flew, he sprung, right? These simple sentences really can paint a picture for us. They're short, they have a strong, powerful effect. Tad watched, blood flew, he sprung. We're gonna look for just the subject and just the verb. So Tad is my subject, who or what did it? What did Tad do? He watched. We already worked with the sentence, blood flew, right? He, who or what did it? He, what did he do? He sprung, which means like he got up really quickly and ran. This one's from Nancy Farmer's House of, the Scorp House of Scorpions, and if you haven't read this yet, you should. It's so good. Matt swung. We worked at that one already. Maria flinched. What did Maria do? She flinched. Matt froze. Maria smirked. I love this one because it tells such a perfect story. Matt swung, Maria flinched, Matt froze, Maria smirked. I mean, you can hear Maria laughing in that smirk, right? Like she's clearly teasing him with her flinching. And just through these short sentences, I can create that whole story. I'm going to ask for you to try this one. This is from Rick Yancey's The Fifth Way. Remember I was saying this is my favorite book that I read this summer. He turned, Casey gasped. Her finger tightened on the trigger. So that last one is not a simple sentence, right? Because it has more than um, it has more than just a subject and just a verb. But I'm gonna cross off this for you so that you can figure it out on your own. Okay, so our simple sentence for this last sentence is gonna be her finger tightened. Okay, so your job right now, I'm gonna ask for you to pause the video. I want for you to try to identify the subject and the verb. Um, of each of these three sentences. Okay, so you should have identified he as a subject, he turned, Casey as a subject. What is Casey doing? She gasped. I love that action verb. Her finger tightened. So what is doing the tightening? Not her, finger is, right? Finger tightened. Okay, so I want for you to be thinking about at this point, why? Why would we use these simple sentences? These short, short sentences? Well, I use them because changing up the sentence length makes writing more enjoyable to read. We actually call this sentence fluency. When things are really short and choppy and all the sentences are these short choppy sentences, a lot of times it sounds choppy. It feels uncomfortable to read. Or if we have all these really long sentences strung together, 
we find that as a reader, it's hard for us to understand. It's hard. We kind of get lost in these long sentences. So we need to vary our sentence length. So these short, simple sentences help us vary our sentence length and make it more enjoyable for the reader to read. Um, these short, simple sentences also create an impact. Like the gun dropped, he wept. You saw that with this, right, with these ones. Matt swung, Maria flinched, Matt froze, Maria smirked, right? They can really create an impact on the reader. So let's look at these verbs. So one of the things that we noticed watched flew and um, watch flew sprung swung flinched froze smirked turned gasped tightened we said that these were all action verbs right they really paint a picture for the reader so I want us to look at a few of these action verbs and then we'll come back and we'll ask why why do we use action verbs so let's look at this picture of this woman eating this huge gigantic hamburger, right? So we have a couple really colorful action verbs that we could use. I could say that Jamie devoured or Jamie digested or Jamie dined, Jamie gorged, Jamie indulged, Jamie inhaled, or Jamie nibbled. So I'm going to choose which one I want to use. So if I am trying to tell this story and I feel like I really want to get across the idea that she's like scarfing this thing down. I could use scarf even as, as an action verb. But I want you to get the picture of like her just like shoving this hamburger in her mouth. So I'm going to say inhale. Like she's not even chewing. She's just like breathing in this hamburger. So let's look at um, this syrup picture. The syrup is doing something. And I have a list, a great list of, of action verbs here. The syrup cascaded, it flowed, it oozed, it spattered, it spewed, it glided. I'm going to do oozed, right? Because I want you to picture it moving slowly across the pancakes. <laughs> so here's our are crying baby. So let's look at some of the action verbs for this. Bellowed, hollered, howled, lamented, shrieked, wailed. So I'm going to go with the baby for sure. Right now it looks like it's shrieking. So I'm going to say the baby shrieked. I want for the reader to hear that high pitched sound when I look at this image. And then like these, this picture of the students walking, like what are different ways that they could walk? Because it's really important that readers not just know that they're like walking, but they know exactly how they're walking. So that's one of the reasons I use action verbs. Bolted, scurried, flounced. Flounced is like kind of like dancing. Like if you can picture someone kind of like frolicking, um, frolic could also be a great action verb. Bolted, scurried, flounced. The students flounced. The students strolled. You can picture like that with them walking slowly and kind of chatting. They meandered. They plotted. They sauntered. They stalked, right? That, that the way that they walk for that one, stalked. Um, is really different. They wandered, right? They just like are wandering around. So I'm going to choose, um, I'm going to choose plotted here. They plotted because I want it to feel like it's like they're doing like their day to day. They're just plotting around. Okay, so why do we use action verbs? So we talked a little bit about this first one here. Um, we do it because it it gives us a more precise picture, right? So rather than just saying walked, oh sorry, rather than just saying the students walked, plotted gives me a more precise image of how they're walking. And then it also, action verbs do a way better job of painting a picture for the reader than our to be verbs is, was, and were. For example, she was scared, yeah, I mean, great. She was scared. Like, I can picture her maybe being scared. But she shrieked and bolted. I can really picture her, like, that high-pitched squeal. And then I can picture her, like, jumping up and running away, right? That paints a way better image for me as a reader than she was scared. So let's try it. Your goal right now is you are going to try out simple sentences and you're going to try out action verbs. So I want you to open up your composition notebook and I'm going to ask for you um, to 
picture that you are in Jurassic Park. So hopefully you've all have seen Jurassic Park or you've seen clips from that movie, but it's where um, it was like this theme park that was supposed to have dinosaurs in it and it was supposed to be really safe, but then the dinosaurs got out somehow. And so you're in Jurassic Park and you're hiding from this dinosaur. You have a picture here to kind of stimulate your imagination. So you're hiding from a dinosaur. There's dinosaurs around um, and you need to write a scene only in simple sentences. So remember a simple sentence. Sorry. <laughs> remember a simple sentence. It's just going to have one subject and one verb. It's going to look, your scene is going to look a lot like this, but I'm going to ask for it to be longer. It's going to feel kind of choppy because they're short. But like Matt swung, Maria flinched, Matt froze, Maria smirked. So you are only allowed to write in simple sentences. And... I want for you to try out some really colorful action verbs. There's a list of action verbs in Schoology. I would love for you to go look at that list and see how many of them you can embed in your writing. Okay, pause the video now, get started with your writing. When you're done, there are some other activities that you can use to practice these three skills in Schoology.